Hi, it's Zeta here, and in this tutorial we will discuss about grass in Unity. We will start with terrain settings, then move on to the various methods of adding grass, and also discuss how we can optimize it. So, let's get started. First, let's talk about detail resolution and detail resolution per patch. Here we have a small terrain, and if we go into the settings, we will see that we have uh, options for detail resolution. It determines the resolution our terrain will have when it come to add details to it. I set resolution to 8, so in this case our terrain has a grid with a resolution of 8 by 8. So if we add grass to it, it will be limited to just one square of this grid. So, across of the entire length of the terrain, we will have exactly 8 of those points. We can easily check this by adding more batches of grass. And as you can see, I can add exactly 8 of these batches in length and width. If we want to add grass between those squares, Unfortunately, it will be impossible, because Unity will always add it to the bottom or top square. So, if we increase this resolution, then the squares become smaller and we can add more details and we have more control over the distribution. Now, let's move on to the details resolution per patch. And, oh my god, I think I haven't found a tutorial that described this correctly so far. Some tutorial says that this increases the amount of details and others says that it reduces the distance between models in one square. So remember these ones and do not spread nonsense from other tutorials. Detail resolution per patch is nothing but a divisor that tells Unity how much it should group the display of our details. So Unity divides our detail resolution into smaller fragments and then render everything in those fragments at once. So in this case Unity will render two patch in the length and two patch in the white. Because dividing 32 by 16 gives us two. So we have four patch in our terrain. If we reduce this value to, for example, 8, then dividing 32 by 8 gives us 4, and that's how many squares Unity will generate. So increasing the detail resolution per patch actually reduce the number of patches, which gives us a better performance. So you may ask, why not to set the highest possible number? Well, because firstly, we don't want the player to suddenly see a huge amount of grass rendering in front of them. And secondly, remember that when we're using, for example, occlusion cooling, the entire patch will be rendered, even if we only see a part of it. So when creating each terrain, we will have to take all this into account and find a middle ground between optimization and other aspects. I want to just mention that some assets, such as uh, grass from Nature Manufacture, and no, this is not an uh, advertisement, have uh, options that allow us to mask this effect. In their shaders, we can set culling, so the grass will be rendered in the engine first, but it will smoothly appear only when the camera is in a specific distance allowing us to display different groups of plants at a different distance and this minimize effect of hard cut off. Since we already discussed the terrain settings, now let's add a model to our terrain. So first select the terrain, then choose Paint Details, select Edit Details and add Detailed Mesh. Now we have this new window and in the detail prefab we can add model that we want to use. If we try to add a prefab with LOD then we got this error but in video basic terrain problems I show how we can deal with it. Link for that tutorial you can find in the description. 
However, if our model does not include ELOD, we can add it here without any issues. Using the algin to ground slider, we can determine how much Unity can tilt the model to match the terrain. In the next four fields, we can specify the minimum and maximum weight and height of the model. We can leave the noise seed unchanged because it is nothing more than a randomly generated seed based on which Unity will place all models in the terrain. Model placed on the terrain will have similar height and width and I think we don't want to achieve the effect of perfectly trimmed lawn. So to change this we will use a noise spread. When we increase this value, Unity will then generate a random height and weight of those models based on the value that we set before. Using another slider, we specify at what distance from the hole Unity should not place our models. Detail density is now inactive, but we will return to this shortly. Here we can enable or disable GPU instancing for our prefab and here we can choose whether our prefab should be affected by changing the density scale value. Now we can add models, but before we paint them on the terrain, we need to specify the detail scatter mode. So let's go back to the terrain settings. In Unity we have two modes and it is important to remember that once a mode is chosen, it cannot be changed as it will remove all the details we have already placed on the terrain. So what you choose here is crucial. If we choose Instance Count Mode, we use the Opacity and Target Strength settings to decide the density of the models and we can choose exactly place when they should be located. Using Detail Density Scale, we can later modify the overall density of all details across the entire terrain. If we want a particular model not be affected by density change, then we must select them, Edit and Deselect Affect Density Scale. The second mode we can choose is a Coverage mode and when we select them during painting details, we'll paint them based on the density settings. So if we choose this mode and go back to our model settings, the detail density options is now active and we can use it to determine how densely we want to our models to be on the terrain. The advantage of this solution is that we can change the amount of the specific models in our terrain at any time, but its place will be generated randomly, so they might not to be exactly where we want them to be. So I leave the choice between those two modes up to you. Now when we have everything set up, we can move on and add our grass to the terrain. If we have a large area and want to cover it with grass, remember not to cover the entire area with prefabs that generate shadows, as this will have a very huge impact on performance. Completely removing shadow is also not recommended, as it will make our grass look uninteresting. So what should we do to achieve the effect of dense nice looking grass? First, let's duplicate our prefab by selecting it and using Ctrl D. Then click on this new prefab and disable cast shadow on it. Now let's add it to our terrain, but this time in the settings we don't want our model to be too tall, so set the minimum height to 0.1 and the maximum height to around 1. Let's increase detail density and click add. This way we will be able to densify our grass on the terrain without losing too much performance compared to covering the entire area with shadow generating grass. And now let's optimize a little bit our scene. So first let's reduce a number of trees on our terrain. 
So let's find a prefab that we created before and click on it. And since we use it to dance or grass, we don't need to be a very detailed. So now, as you can see, this model uses a very detailed mesh. So it will be much better to use a mesh with fewer trees. Now we have 66 trees and this mesh have 31. So let's assign this mesh to our no cast shadow prefab. So as you can see the grass on the scene hasn't changed much. But when we start the game we have a much less trees than before. Remember also to enable draft instances on the terrain because it also reduces the number of batches. It is also worth remembering that the color of the terrain texture and grass should match each other because it might turn out that we'll be able to reduce the density of the grass without a loss of the visual aspect of a given scene. But I recommend doing this only when the post-processing is ready, because some elements such as volumetric clouds affect the color of the terrain. Also remember that the detail drowning distance we can be changed in the terrain settings using detail distance. And that's all for this tutorial, I hope it was useful and will help you create your own grassy area. Of course, if you have any questions, write them in the comments and until next time, see ya!